Hello, hello everyone. Welcome to my channel. My name is Elise. I hope you're all doing so, so good today. We're doing my wrap up for the month of September and September was a great reading month for me, quality and quantity wise. So it felt very nice to be fully immersed in the stuff that I was reading and overall enjoying like the very vast majority of these. And I read more than I usually do. I finally broke the seven book a month curse that I was under. It wasn't really a curse. That's a lot of books in a month and I'm very happy to have read those. But I was like, man, I just want to not read seven books. Can I please just read anything other than seven books? And I finally did it. So I think we have 10 books to talk about. Let's just count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 books to talk about. Yes. So we're going to go over them in the order that I read them per usual. And we're starting with a book that I read on the very first day of September. And I read it all that day, which hasn't happened in forever. And that is Piglet by Lottie Hazel. This is published by Henry Holt. And this was a book that I was highly anticipating. You can tell because I pre-ordered the hardcover of it, which I normally never do. And I also adore this cover. It's one of my favorite covers of the year. Also influenced why I pre-ordered it. But this is about a woman who is engaged to the love of her life and a lot of people admire and envy their life and that makes the main protagonist feel good about herself and her nickname is Piglet that's what most of the people call her in the book and that nickname seems to have some particular meaning in the plot as we're meeting her at this point in her life so leading up to her wedding her husband reveals a secret and it threatens to break apart their relationship but she decides to stay with him anyway but even though she decides to stay with him she is increasingly becoming more and more resentful and that is appearing in a ravenous like appetite for things and you're sort of starting to see her become unhinged and you're seeing her internal struggle between the dream of the life that she has built but also wanting to be true to herself. And maybe those don't feel like the same thing anymore. So that internal struggle, I think is the main crux of why this novel is interesting and why I wanted to keep turning the pages. Again, it's been so long since I've read a book in a single day and this definitely fit the bill. I wouldn't say the plot is particularly propulsive by any means, but just trying to figure out what choice she's gonna make I thought was fascinating enough to move the plot along so I overall really enjoyed this this wasn't quite the five star that I was hoping that it would be I would say this is a solid four star for me but again really interesting character work and I think that's the shining star of this novel and I would read from this author again so yeah that is Piglet by Lottie Hazel Next up, we have another hardback, which this is the month of the hardbacks for me. I almost never pick up hardbacks, even though I do have a good chunk on my TBR, but I picked up a ton of hardbacks this month. And the next one is Sisters by Daisy Johnson. This one is published by Riverhead Books. And this is the book that I put on my TBR from my, what is that called? Book haul Revisit. I haven't filmed the last couple of them, but I have still been looking back and picking one to put on my TBR. I'm just super behind on filming the last couple months. So those are videos that can like easily go. So this is the one that I picked. So I'm still reading them if you're keeping me honest. This one I really, really enjoyed. And it was so much more plotty than I imagined it to be in a short amount of time. It follows sisters who have a very complicated relationship with one another. It's a fairly toxic relationship, particularly from one sister towards the other. We have a more reserved sister who is essentially getting like emotionally abused by her other sister who is much more aggressive and tenacious, but somehow, despite all of that, they seem to balance each other in some ways and are pretty much inseparable. We also have another, not a main protagonist, but definitely a secondary character in their mother and you're getting um, their mother's experience with depression. 
throughout the novel as well in her sort of neglect of the two sisters. And this book is kind of fever dream like there's lots of mysteries and knowledge that the book is withholding from you intentionally, I think to increase the tension, and also the pace of the novel. And I think it does that really well. The descriptions were done amazingly in here. I thought it talked about the toxicity of teenagers really well, definitely in an exaggerated way. But I think it still felt like it had a kernel of truth at the center of it and enjoyed that as well. Also, this has like a vague, vague haunted house type of vibe to it. They are living in this very creepy, rundown beach house that was in the family, but they haven't been there for a long time. And there's like weird noises and stuff like that. It This would be a really good read for the month of October. So yeah, if that sounds interesting to you, definitely pick it up. I partially picked this as my TBR pick from my book haul revisit because I know that there's going to be an adaptation of this and now after reading it and enjoying it so much I can't wait for the adaptation to come out and I think this will be very interesting to see in like film or TV form. I don't know which one it's going to be but yeah love this would highly recommend. All right, next up we have the four books that I read for the vlog that came out in September, which is reading books my mother-in-law sent me, which again, so appreciative to her for sending me all these amazing books every year. And that vlog was a blast, truly, to film. So I will link it down below and it'll have much more in-depth thoughts. I'm going to go over it pretty quickly here since you can hear me talk all about it there. But firstly, we have the thriller that I picked and that is All the Missing Girls by Megan Miranda. This one is published by Simon & Schuster. This is one of the older books that my mother-in-law has sent me that I have yet to read and she has sent me basically all of the Megan Miranda's that I've read before and I knew I liked her as a thriller author so this felt like a safe bet for me and it definitely was. This is my second favorite of Megan Miranda's. This one follows, what's her name, Nicolette who's returning to her hometown because her father is ill and they're needing to sell his house. So she's returning back there where her brother still is so they can get all the paperwork together and make it happen. You realize that she does not like returning to her hometown partially because her best friend when she was in high school disappeared when they were 18 and it's still a cold case. Nobody knows what happened to her. Some people think that she just ran away. Some people think that something horrible happened to her. So that mystery is kind of bubbling up in the background and you're getting flashbacks over time about that. Then the current day mystery is after Nicola arrives back home, there is another girl that goes missing who is around the same age. And so it starts to drag up things about the previous case as well as you might imagine because it's a small town. She does small town mysteries and thrillers. So that's the central premise. The format of this book is really interesting because it goes back in time day by day. So I think you start on like day 15 and then you go all the way up um, to the present day in terms of the novel. And yeah, really enjoyed this. Again, it was my second favorite of hers, which is definitely high praise. She's a very reliable thriller author. Uh, and this one does tackle the themes of the normalization of violence towards women, particularly from men. And I thought it did that really well. So yeah, definitely recommend that one. And then next up in the vlog, we had fourth wing and this is the wild card for that blog which is why I went with a more tried and true one in the thriller but this one is written by Rebecca Yaros this particular edition is from Piatkis which is a UK publisher this was so fun that's what I said in the vlog and that's what I will say here today it was so much fun if you don't know what this is about it follows a girl what is her name is her name Violet yes her name is Violet and she lives in this fantasy realm where there are four kind of quadrants that you can go to for schooling and you're sort of forced into going into one of the four quadrants because that realm is actively at war. So you're conscripted into one of these groups. She originally thinks she's going to be a scribe, which is sort of like the knowledge based group for them. But at the last minute, her mother, who is very high up in the military, 
demands that she goes into the dragon rider group where the people who want the, to be the most powerful warriors for this realm go. It's also extremely dangerous to go through the dragon rider school and most cadets die before they ever make it out of the program. And Violet is kind of a frail, let's say. Um, she has a condition. It doesn't say what it is. Um, and I think that's intentional by the author, but I don't know that for certain. But uh, she has a condition that means that her joints don't work as well as most people. So things are often coming out of place and she can't handle a lot of impact, maybe the way that some other people could. So she essentially thinks that this is a death sentence, but her mom, again, is forcing her. She has no choice. So she goes into this school and you kind of get everything from there. I thought the strengths of this were the plotting and the pacing, so well done. I thought the romance was well done in this. This is romanticy. Uh, and it was interesting to read romance tropes that got developed in a different way because you could add magic and fantastical elements to it. So that was very fun. There were some things I didn't like about this. For example, s some of the word choice I thought was a little bit cringy, but thoroughly enjoyed it way more than I thought I would. And that then led me to pick up Iron Flame, which is the sequel. And these are long and I read them so quickly. So while I was finishing up Fourth Wing, I had to take a trip and I came back to a package and my mother-in-law has sent me this as well. So I was like, okay, I'm in because this ends on a cliffhanger. So does this. So be prepared for that. Um, and yeah, I went straight into this and thoroughly enjoyed this one as well. I do slightly like Fourth Wing better, but this also continuing with the fun, continuing with the strong pacing and plotting. I thought fairly strong secondary characters and overall and am enjoying the world of this. So I will be reading the third one, which comes out in January. And yeah, that is the, what what is this series called? I don't know. Is this called the Fourth Wing series? I have no idea, but I'm enjoying it. And then lastly for that vlog, we have The Marriage Portrait by Maggie O'Farrell. This one is by Knopf. And this was my favorite, my darling of that vlog. And maybe my favorite thing that I read the entire month. I think it might have been, yes. Um, oh, God, this was so good. And thank the Lord, because off of the back of Hamnet, I was very concerned that Maggie O'Farrell was not going to be an author for me. And that was truly devastating because I wanted to get it. I wanted to be a Maggie O'Farrell fangirl because so many of her books sound good. And this one ugh, made my heart sing. This follows Lucrezia and Lucrezia Medici. And if you're familiar with that story, you kind of know the general vibe of what you're going to get here. And there is an author's note at the beginning and the end that talk about some of the historical elements of this, which I appreciated that the author did that. But it follows Lucrezia almost from her birth. So you get her conception. It starts with her parents. And then you kind of blow into the rest of her life slowly but surely. You start to realize that she's very different from her siblings. She has a curiosity about her that allows her to have more like out of the box progressive thinking than maybe some of her other siblings. And maybe even her parents as well. But at some point, I think when she's 12, her one of her older sisters, Maria, is betrothed to, what's his name? Alfonso. Yeah, Alfonso. But Maria passes away. And Alfonso says, like, well, the connection of our families is still very important to me. He wants the power that would come with it. So I would like to marry Lucrezia because he's met her once before and found her intriguing, let's say, which is super creepy because she's a 12 year old and he, I think is like 25 or something like that at the time. So bleh. Lucrezia's father agrees to it and Lucrezia is very against wanting to be married to Alfonso, but ultimately they are married, I think at the point when she's 14. So that's a little bit of the plot, but what I think this does so well is this book starts with a flash forward which is Lucrezia's like modern day timeline and she is having this inner monologue that Alfonso is going to kill her. She feels certain that he is going to kill her and then you go back in time and get all this 
historical information about her and her family leading up to meeting Alfonso. And it creates this dissonance between the two timelines because when you first meet Alfonso, he seems really kind and you're not sure why she's having these thoughts about him murdering her. And then more and more gets revealed as she gets to know him better and better. This book is also talking a lot about class and I thought it did a, a really great job of describing how invisible and insignificant the upper class views the lower class as and just the horrors that go on in that extreme of a class divide. Ugh, there are just so many great things about this book. If you, like me, were slightly disappointed in Hamnet, I urge you to try this because I think this is the superior novel. I know that's crazy to say, but I think it. So I said it. So that is The Marriage Portrait by Maggie O'Farrell. All right, let's look at what is next. Okay, next up, we have the latest volume of Spy Family. This is volume 12, and it's written and illustrated by Tetsuya Endo, uh, translated, in, translated from the Japanese by Casey Lowe, published by Viz Media. This manga series is very heartwarming and wholesome, but also pretty action-packed. Follows an assassin, a telepath, and a spy who make this found family and they're trying to go about this mission together, except nobody really knows that the other one is what they are. So yeah, lots of hijinks going on. This one was a pretty decent installment. I'm still on the precipice of deciding whether or not I want to continue in this series because I don't feel like we're getting enough of a push in the overarching narrative for the characters. This one though did give me a glimmer of hope that something that I'm sure everybody else has been waiting for who reads this series might happen. And I'm gonna read the next one to see if it happens. And if it doesn't happen, I think that might be the end for me. But I got a glimpse that something's gonna go on. I know that's cryptic, but if you've read these, you maybe know what I'm talking about. But yeah, love these, super fun, quick read. You can read it in an afternoon. Enjoyed it. Next up, we have another highly anticipated book, and that is Mammoth by Eva Balthazar, translated from the Spanish by Julia Sanchez. And this one is published by And Other Stories. This is the last to be released in her loose triptych series that's been coming out with And, uh, and Other Stories. I have read the other two, them being Permafrost and Boulder. This one follows a similar narrator. They all have similar personalities, but they're not the same narrator. This narrator, the word it uses on the back is disenchanted, and that's the perfect word for her. She is disenchanted by life and decides to try and make her own way, but she's extremely pessimistic, which is also similar to the other narrators in the other two books. The plot of this specifically follows her moving out to the countryside and becoming a tenant on this kind of like pseudo farm type of deal. So she can just be alone and away from people because she hates people. She also starts up a relationship with her neighbor who is a shepherd and that does eventually turn into a sex worker situation so she can earn some extra money because she's very poor. And we're just sort of like getting her rural experience. But this one I think is by far the darkest of the three that I have read in the triptych. And I do think this one is my least favorite. That's probably just because like the amount of despair in this I felt like was bordering on unrelenting and I I just wanted some additional complexity to it which is, is like I still think this is very well written but of the three because it's hard not to compare them I think the other two are superior but overall I'm glad I read this and still enjoyed it but no this is the darkest one look up trigger warnings before you go into it uh, and know that the tone is bleak. So yeah, that is Mammoth. I think I would rank them uh, honestly in the order that they were published. So Permafrost is my favorite, then Boulder, then Mammoth. But I'm very excited to have the complete collection now. And these might be ones I return to and reread later on in my life and get something different out of. So that is Mammoth. 
And then we have a poetry collection that I absolutely adored. And that is The Tradition by Jericho Brown. This is a stunning cover. This is published by Copper Canyon Press, which is a local press to me. It's in uh, Northern Washington. And they, at this time, only published poetry. But this is a very well-known collection because as you can see down here, it won the Pulitzer Prize the year that it came out. And my God, this was so good. This was truly so good. It's talking a lot about race and how accustomed people of color, particularly Black people, have had to become with violence and living in terror. But then it's also got these moments of like reclaiming joy and sensuality and pleasure. And that comparison I thought was so well done. This is one of the only collections where I read all of the poems out loud as I was going through it, which I do occasionally. And this one was an amazing book to do that with. The cadence of the poems is really, really lovely. And it was so striking to be able to like hear it while I was reading it. So I would definitely encourage you to do it that way if that's something that you're open to. But yeah, I absolutely love this. It was definitely a five star. And if you are interested in poetry, I would definitely say you should pick this up because, oh God, it was so, so good, truly. That is the tradition. And then lastly, we have a short story collection. I've been trying to get back into short story collections. And so far we're succeeding. This one is Slug by Megan Milks. This is published by The Feminist Press. And unfortunately, this one was a miss for me. I would say of all the books I read this month, this one was my least favorite and I will probably be unhauling it. It's a surrealist collection that's talking about uh, trans identity and sexuality and kind of like queerness as a whole, not, not queerness like sexuality wise, but queerness as in like breaking out of the binary of things. This was like too experimental for me. I could not grasp what the fuck was going on half the time and things were like so grotesque sometimes I was just like come on like do we really do we really need to take it this far so there is one story that I did really like and it's about a bee a, a relationship between a bee and a flower and how that relationship is like toxic in a lot of ways that story I enjoyed the rest didn't really work for me if I wasn't reading through it so quickly, I would have DNF'd it, but I did finish it. If you like those like really off the wall experimental stories that are just super messy, this could be a perfect fit for you. And again, I appreciate it was what I was trying to do with the themes and, and trying to explore the messiness of all that, but the stylistic quality of this just wasn't the right fit for me. So that is Slug by Megan Milks. I do adore this edition. So very sad that it's gonna be leaving my collection, but alas, only books that I truly love can stay in the collection. So those are the 10 books that I read in the month of September. Please let me know if you have read any of these and if you have what you thought of them and also tell me what you loved and read in September and I will see you all in the next video. Bye!